Hey guys, so this video will be a sort of half review about the Kingston Arms Fader Shirt. This right here. Right? So, this is my latest purchase, and this is, all, this is also kind of why um, there haven't been any videos up. I wanted to do a video on this particularly. I'll let you guys take a look. Go. I'll run you guys through the specs soon. Oh my, I am working on limited space here. Um, here's that edge. Amazing distal taper. And the handle once again. Alright, oh, uh, just a clarification. This is a different sword from the, um, the, the Kingston Arms Sports Fader Shirt. Um, I'll put a picture somewhere here, I don't know, um, of that sword. And, well, I'll, I'll get into why I wanted to clarify that and of course it's, it's an obvious clarification for reason that it's a different sword but there have also been some issues with that particular one and I also want to talk about how that might affect this although I'm not sure I, there, there isn't there doesn't seem to be a lot of information on this particular fader shirt yet well, I couldn't find any myself maybe you guys can find something um, but yeah here let me run through the specs I have um, the overall length of this fader shirt is uh, 51, in, uh, 51 inches, uh, 51 and 1 eighths inches. Uh, the blade alone is 38 and 1 in, each, uh, inches. And the blade is made out of uh, 5160 high carbon steel. Um, the handle, including the pommel, okay, uh, is 12 inches, excluding the pommel is 9. Um, the weight of the whole sword is 3 pounds and 11.7 ounces. Uh, the point of balance is 3 and 3 eighths inches from the guard, so it seems to be right where the shield ends. So right there, more or less. Alright, and this is what surprised me about this, the thickness of the shield area around here is 7.6 millimeters and it tapers down to 2.5 millimeters so as you can see here it's a very strong strong distal taper it gets fairly thin here it also has a rolled point now this design is actually based off of a previous design by Hanwei. Um, I also might put a picture of that uh, somewhere here. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a sort of re updated design. Uh, by the way, all this information about the the specs comes from Cult of Athena, where I got this for about well, yeah, one hundred. $94, more or less. Uh, its retail value is about $270. Uh, other than that, um, going back to uh, this fader here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's an updated version uh, from Hanway, uh, made by Kingston Arms in, in partnership with, I think, Cas Iberia. Um, but the design itself, where Hanwei got it from, is actually from a, um, a original period sword in Switzerland. So, uh, distinctive white shield, which is another reason why I got this sword. I personally love that shield. And I also like how the blade, unlike most faders I seem to see, uh, starts off skinny here and gets wider as you go to the to the tip. 
I'm not sure how that profile they what the measurements of the profile taper is. I haven't taken measurements nor have they seen any online. But nice design in my opinion. So yeah. Um, oh yes, also the fittings, the, the the pommel here and the guard are stainless steel along with this ferrule, I think that's what it's called. This this metal band here in the handle. And for the pommel, it's interesting. Um, this area here is actually connected. This is part of the pommel. This, uh, this, this what seems to be a metal band is actually connected to the pommel. And it is not constructed. So it's not being, you can disassemble it. I have tried to disassemble it before, but everything here is solid, which gives me high hopes for this. Uh, I cannot remove any, anything. I've unscrewed the nut tried to yank the, the bomb out just to get a look at the tang and nothing, I can't, I can't move anything. Um, and I'm afraid to hammer it because there might be extra pins, uh, pins in here connecting the blade to the, to the guards, I don't know. I might try it eventually. Um, so yeah, uh, the reason also why I'm calling this a uh, half review is because I haven't took this into sparring yet. Uh, classes are currently uh, we're currently off season. We're looking for another venue because contract ended. They're tearing down the building, etc., etc. That's also another reason why there haven't been any sparring videos lately. Uh, it's just because I haven't gotten the opportunity to spar. But we will hopefully be meeting up soon, informally, just so we can play around with swords and all that and see this thing in action. Uh, so yeah. Um, the handle is bound in cord. Not sure what that cord is, but whatever it is, this stuff is on there tight. Like this, this feels amazingly solid. Good job on Kingston Arms. So yeah, and I love how the fittings are stainless steel. I won't have to worry about uh, worry about it rusting or anything like that. So pretty yeah. cool. So going back to that other. Kingston Arms Fader, uh, with they, what they call specifically the Sports Fader. This one here, according to them, is called the Fader Shirt Fencing Longsword. The other one is called the uh, the, the Sport Fader Shirt. Uh, that one looks, well, if you're familiar with the design, it looks more like the Albion Meyer. Uh, it has a more of a, a crown, a crown-shaped um, shield, and instead of tapering wider, it tapers from wide. The thin. Uh, that one also doesn't have a, a rolled tip as far as I know. Um, but stories have come up about more than a year ago where uh, when they were prototyping it and or people generally buying it and testing it out, it was mixed. People said, a lot of people said um, it works well, it stood up well in sparring, even um, Kings and Arms said it wasn't really meant for high intensity sparring, it was just meant for drilling, but people have taken it into sparring bouts and they said it, it, it works perfectly for its price, which is cheaper than this. That one you can get for, I think, um, Health of Athena for 175 US dollars, so a lot cheaper than that. That's pretty cheap for a fader shirt. Um, but there also have been accounts of it, quote unquote, exploding on people uh, upon the first. Uh, first contact with another sword, the blade shatters, and that's that. And I've been reading forums about how people have, uh, they, people were talking to the designers of that fader, and they were saying that they, they're planning to, you know, work on the design more, fine-tune the the the, uh, the tempering, and the heat treating process, which is good. Um, they've sent uh, parts of those blades back and to test the, the Rockwell hardness. Some of them came out to be 54 Rockwell hard, uh, 54 um, HRC higher. Um, so they, they were shooting for more of a 50 um, in, in that sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, my concern about that is did the same thing apply to this? Because I haven't, there hasn't been any much information on the internet about this particular model. So that's why it's also half of you. I can't say yet. You know, if it blows up on me, then I'll tell you guys. Um, if not, then yeah. Uh, as for the flex, uh, which uh, 
pretty stiff in, in my opinion, okay? I haven't handled that many faders and I'll go into that in a bit about the handling as well. So, yeah, that's about as far as I can do it, although I'm not exactly the strongest, so going into the, the handling of this. Uh, when I swing it, you know, it feels good. I keep in mind that I've, the only other faders that I've handled is like two Reganiers and a Klebowski. That's, that's about it. And I guess you can, if you count uh, Blunt Trainers, um, a Fabri Armorum. And as for those, those felt pretty good. Um, somewhat similar to this, I, I suppose. The Flex, however, this feels to, to me at least, coming from my uh, not a lot of experience, I suppose, in handling faders, but this to me seems fairly stiff. I, 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 don't, I don't know about you guys, but yeah. Um, so, and the reason why my my opinion on the handling might be biased is because I haven't been using a fader, well, a proper fader uh, for sparring and drilling. I've been using this thing here. Uh, this is what I've been using for the ever since I started HEMA formally in my school. This is a locally made in the Philippines um, uh, lightweight training long sword. As you can see, the flex is pretty pretty high in this thing. Um, and this is super light. This is about two pounds, like about two and a half pounds around there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, I forget the exact measurements. And check this out. The point of balance is right, right on the guard. So this, because I've been using this, I've been getting used to this sort of Feel of a light, of a lightweight, uh, lightweight sword. After picking this up, you know, I, I still need to get used to it. But the fact that it seems to handle similarly to uh, Klebowski, more, more, the, more of the Klebowski, the Reganiers, uh, I think this can move. It's, it's a lot nimbler, in my opinion, than a Reganier. Um, but that's because I've heard Reganiers don't have a lot of distal taper. It's there, but not a lot. This one, distal taper is insane. Um, but yeah, uh, and because of that, I'd assume that you know the balance is pretty good because I've heard a lot of good things from Klebowski and Regan. So yeah, um, Kingston Arms Failure Shirt. Uh, I'm hoping to get some test footage of this in sparring. I'll show it to you guys one more time. All right. I am really loving that shield. That's just amazing, in my humble opinion, right? Uh, now, I'd like some feedback about how this half review went. This is my very first review of anything, really. Um, and, you know, I'd like to improve. Uh, see, how, see how things go from there. Oh, show you more in the guard. Almost forgot. I kind of like that swept area here, and the guard itself is, what is that? It's not octagonal, that is, or is it octagonal? Yeah, it's octagonal. Um, I can count my sides, right? It's a pretty thin guard too. I wonder how this will hold up the strikes from other faders, let you know about that as well over time. As of now, can I recommend it? Well, can I recommend it without any, like, with, with what information I have? Yes, it seems to be fairly cheap um, for a fader, at least if you get it on Cult of Athena. Um, and it, as far as I know, uh, as of this moment, it is still in stock as well as the sports fader shirt, um, which I've been hearing a lot of good things lately. People seem to be buying them again, and I haven't heard any bad things as of late. Um, so yeah, th that other fader shirt I'd love to try as well, but <laughs> funds are pretty low, so maybe next time, I don't know. Um, so yeah, a apart from that, there's also, I like how this shield also has these bevels along there, so it uh, it's has you know, more of an edge here. Here. So yeah, 
Um, pretty good. I like it. Um, I have heard of tips breaking on swords, uh, rolled tips at least, so I, I wonder how uh, this will hold up. The, uh, since I don't know if I, oh man, I forgot if I mentioned this in the specs, but yeah, the uh, because it gets fairly thin here, um, 2.5 millimeters, yeah, uh, I wonder how this, this tip will hold up. So let you guys know about that when I can. So yeah, this has been the partial review. Uh, just our, I suppose it's more of a first impressions, but I don't know. Uh, I've had this for quite a while now, and I'm only getting to recording it now because my schedule, crazy schedules, all of that. But yeah, um, the Kingston Arms Vader shirt. for the review then that'll be all I guess but so for those who still who are still sticking around in my small channel uh, I've got some sort of updates here um, what I've been working on recently and I got to that right here uh, I, I did want to make a video about this particular sword here it's an arming sword that I made myself it's a blunt one it's for sparring, sword and buckler, whatever. Um, but the unique thing about this is that it is made out of mild steel. Uh, now I know you might be thinking, mild steel, oh, that's gonna explode the moment you hit something. Well, this has been with me for a long time already. I made this months ago, uh, and those months I've been pretty active uh, in him. I've been bringing this almost every day, mucking around with it. This has, got, this has gone up against a Regnier longsword and a Hanwei blunt training arming sword. So I'll just give you a quick look, of, uh, look and I don't want to spoil too much about future content, but here. So yeah, everything was made. I don't have the capability of forging a proper pommel, so I just kind of beamed on some slabs of metal there. Um, there's the guard. No distal taper, it's literally just a uh, piece of two, two inch wide flat stock that I just kind of cut out a blade shape out of. And that's that. Made the, made the guard, made the handle, and everything there. So, yeah, I mean, it's stiff, and if you bend it past a certain point, it will stay bent because that's how mild steel works. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but there's not a lot of bend in it. Of course, I, I had to bend this back several times, but after going up against long swords like Regnier's, this no rattle, nothing. Uh, everything's solid. Uh, yeah, I'm planning on making different designs, prototypes, and hopefully selling it to a, our local market here because in the Philippines, it's hard to get Kima gear here, at least for now. Um, especially, you know, proper faders like this. Uh, a lot of guys here normally make their own stuff, and that's what I'm doing. So if this works, I mean, not for not for uh, uh, for intense sparring, maybe just for light sparring and drilling. This can this can work. That's a um, point to balance it around here. Fairly fairly hefty, I suppose, because there's no distal taper, but because of that nice profile taper, it feels all right done some sword and buckler with it. It's pretty good. I mean, my wrist kind of hurts after uh, after a while, but yeah, that's uh, planning on making a series about exploring mild steel. I'm thinking of something like, I don't know, a mild quest or whatever. Uh, another thing that involves that is yes. this one set dagger. Um, well, large dagger uh, based on an African, African design, also mild steel. Uh, this, I already recorded the footage for it, I just need to get everything done. This should be the first episode of that Mild Quest uh, thing. And the exploration of Mild Steel 
in the use of uh, HEMA sparring equipment or HEMA uh, sparring swords uh, and that. So yeah, uh, that should be exciting because if that, if I can, I don't know, if it works somewhat, then I suppose for those who can't really afford high higher end stuff, then this is fairly cheap. It's pretty darn cheap. It's mild steel. There's no major forging involved, you know, uh, nothing of the sort like that. So it brings down the costs a lot. So yeah, just wanted to quickly show this, show these to you guys. Um, I haven't been at the forge lately. Uh, I intend to do so soon. Um, still thinking of what I want to make. It's an, it's an on and off feeling. But next project, I'm thinking about making a sax, something like that. I've cut up some bearing, some bearing races, and uh, been mucking around with that. But yeah, so that's that. Uh, and I don't know if you guys want to see it again. Here is the feather shirt. I don't know. I just, I just really like it. I'm, I'm sorry. I just really. Uh, and for someone who, you know, can't really spill a lot of money into this hobby uh, for this price this is you know, it's pretty good quality uh, so yeah guys that's the end of that um, hope you enjoyed this video uh, hope to see you guys soon please keep well I, okay I, I was about to say please keep watching my videos but uh, um, you know just stick around hopefully I'll post a video every now and then this isn't something I want to blow up into some big some big channel or whatever just you know a place where I can document all my things and uh, you know, share it with you guys uh, to those who are interested as I like to say. So yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, and yeah, that's it.